So I went to Vegas uh, with Jason Florent and a couple other friends to play in the Battle Spirit Saga launch event. Battle Spirit Saga is a Bandai game that is coming out in like a month. And they had this big tournament in Vegas for a $150,000 prize pool. Um, where you had to like, we getting Vegas vlog? No. And I'm going to talk about why you're not getting it in a second. Um, this is, this is a bit of a story. So like sit down, sit back, relax, and just like enjoy the story. Uh, so it's a game that hasn't come out yet. You can only get product on Friday and then the tournament starts on Saturday. Right. And so I, so the end, so I, was practicing all last week, basically. Uh, I put in a bunch of time for like one week, uh, me and Jason and some others. And basically I built two decks that I thought were better than everything else. There's four colors in Battle Spirit Saga. There's white, which is like a stall color. There's red, which is more of a mid-range color. There's um, purple, which is like mid-range control color. And then there's yellow, which is bad. Uh, so quickly identified yellow sucks. And then there's three decks. There's white control, which people hadn't really figured out. Uh, there's purple, which I really wanted to play. And then there's red. Now, red it's had this card 9, called Super Dragon Seagworm Nova or something like that. Super Nova Seagworm Dragon Nova Man. S like, honestly, something that ridiculous. JK, thank you for the Prime and the five months. Rotating your Prime sub to Eternal. Appreciate that. Uh, so, and this card, this card was bonkers. This Super, Super Dick Nova Man Dragon king god nova man um he was really really good because <laughs> what he would do was you could like Yu-Gi-Oh sacrifice a six mana unit to summon him but then when he attacked he immediately obliterates ten thousand power worth of your opponent's board which is like the majority of the things they're going to have on the board you just kill them instantly there is no reacting you just go bam blah their stuff dies it's it's ridiculous <laughs> and he attacks for a ton but wait it gets better if the six mana card that you sacrifice to Yu-Gi-Oh summon him uh, has Seagworm in the name, of which there is one card that fulfills that quota, um, a six mana dragon, then you can refill your life. And in Battle Spirit Saga, you get five life. And each time you take a damage, the life goes into your resources. So it'd be like it, when you take damage, you could only get hit five times in Legend, Legend of Runeterra, but every time you get hit, you get one mana, basically one max mana. Right, it'd be kind of like that. Uh, so you could imagine the advantage that it is to get hit three or four times to ramp, and then you super Superman Nova, Seagworm Mushroom Cloud Nova, and heal it back up, because then you you have two health bars and you've already ramped. Right, I'm gonna just full screen this. Um, so he's very very powerful. Also Quinn. Uh, so Nova was like insane. And also, the red deck was, like, insane because the deck had the best draw spells. Uh, the deck had the best draw spells in the game. And so, what we found out was that purple is really good, except it loses to Nova. And a lot of the people who were playing Battle Spirit Saga, who were, like, Bandai people, uh, were like, oh, purple versus Nova is 50-50. And we're like, oh, yeah, okay. So then we start playing the matchup, and it turns out purple versus Nova is not 50-50. <laughs> purple versus Nova is, like, 80-20. For Nova, people just don't know what they're doing, right? Like it, it was, it became immediately obvious that red beats literally every single combination of cards that the game had put out. Like Nova, Nova literally beats everything, every single deck that had ever been made or will ever be made in set one, except <laughs> this white deck that I threw together. <laughs> I threw together this white control list, just like basically mono white. And all this deck does is beat Nova. <laughs> But it beats Nova so hard. <laughs> so the week before, we're going, okay, I'm probably going to play white because I like the white control deck. I want to beat Nova stuff. Um, and then there's also Nova. So Jason's like, oh, I'm going to play Nova. Like, this deck's nuts. It beats everything. I'm just going to play it. I'm going to go, okay. Uh, so a couple of my friends are there, and they're buying a bunch of product. And they both wanted to play my white list. So I was like, oh, okay, yeah, here's the deck, blah, blah, blah. Um, go ahead. And then when all said and done, we only had enough white cards in the pool for both of them to play white. So my choice is either I buy hundreds of dollars worth of product to play this white deck, or I just play red. Uh, so I end up just playing Nova. 
And I go, okay, here's the plan. We're going to get to Vegas. We're going to put together this Nova deck. We're going to play for the first time in person. We're going to feel what it feels like. And then we're going to figure out the white matchup. So we go and we start testing. And again, we quickly realize that you don't have to tech anything for any other matchup because Nova blows it out of the water. Like it's the best deck. Um, it absolutely destroys things. There was another red deck called like um, Dino Red or like Rex Red, where it's basically like a much more aggressive version of red looking to take advantage of white. Some of the Dino players thinks it beats Nova. I don't think it beats Nova at all. Um, but there's basically two red decks, an aggressive one that looks to get under white and then Nova that looks to beat literally everything but white. So we're like, OK, we have 24 hours, not 24 hours. We have like 20 hours before we actually have to submit our deck list. Let's figure out this white matchup. We're willing to devote as many sideboard slots as we need to. And we're willing to change up some of the main deck. Because the deck's so strong and you can deal with that. So we start playing against white. And my guys, we are just fucking losing. <laughs> we just cannot win. So we start off very, like, very chipper about it, right? We're like, oh, yeah, no, we got plenty of time. We're going to figure this out. And then throughout the day, you can just see Jason, Florent, and I just slowly descend into madness. <laughs> And we're like, we're literally like Charlie from Always Sunny, that meme where he's got like the board behind him and he's like coked out and he's like trying to figure out the connections. That was us. We're like, okay, but what if, what if we splash three of this guy and we do this in the matchup? And then in game two, we do this. And the problem was, the main problem was, is that we found out how to beat the white matchup. We could beat the white matchup probably 80% of the time in sideboard games, but it's a 60 minute match clock and white takes forever to win. So sometimes you'd be playing game one and it would go 30 minutes or whatever, 30, 40 plus minutes. And you would never have time to win game two and three. Even if you immediately concede game one and you go to game two and three, it's still tough because the way that we got the matchup to be so good was that the game had to go long for us to like guarantee a win, right? Because we were basically like, uh, putting together this combo on board that they couldn't stop. And so we just, yeah, slowly descended into madness. It was so funny. We're up at like 1 a.m. in our respective hotels, like shooting each other's texts. What about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? Like it was, it, it was so funny. So finally I ended up putting this card in that like was so dumb. His name's like Derm Dina or something. It's a white card. It's not even a red card. I put in like two Derm Dinas. Um, and what you can do is you can like pay extra resources to make them unblockable. And that was how I planned to beat the white matchup. I plan to like aggro them and then just play Derm Dyna and be like unblockable, unblockable, <laughs> unblockable <laughs> until they die. And it kind of worked, I guess. But that was that was the deck we laid in on. We're playing Nova, right? And so we get to the tournament and we get there at 930 a.m. to submit our deck list because that's when we were told to show up. Uh, and they take our deck list and we go inside and we're waiting for round one to start. And round one doesn't start till like 1 p.m. We're like 1230 or something ridiculous. So they've already been there for three plus hours before round one starts. <laughs> we turn in our deck list. We sit down at a table and we wait. And the worst part. You, OK, so I'm, I'm going to set the scene. We're in the Vegas Convention Center. Very big. There's also nothing next to the Vegas Convention Center. You can't walk down the street to 7-Eleven. The closest things are a mile plus away, right? Also, in the Vegas Convention Center, you're not allowed to bring in outside food or drink. No outside food or drink. Also, there's a security team. So every time you want to walk out of the main room and then walk back in, you have to open up your backpack, let them poke through it, and then you have to do this thing while they wand you, right, to make sure that you're not, you don't have any guns or something. Um which is frustrating. The convention like food is closed and all they have is this like little chicken strip and hot dog vendor and a little pizza vendor. But the pizza vendor sells little mini pizzas and they have a little mini oven and they put the pizza on this little conveyor belt that puts it through the oven. And then once it's through that, like 45 seconds later, they pick the pizza up, put it back on the beginning of the belt and just keep running it through the oven until it's cooked. It's literally easy bake pizzas. Yeah. And so that's that's the the stage. The, now now the stage is set. We're three hours waiting for round one. We play round one. Win. My deck's insane. Right? Like I'm playing Superman, Nova, biggest dick is Nova Dragon, God Nova. Like my deck's nuts. Uh so I'm just like, I'm just doing a thing. I go, boop, boop, big dragon, boop, boop. And my opponent goes, and my opponent dies. Um 
round two, I play against Cosmic, who's playing yellow, which is a horrendous matchup for him. So I go, big Nova, dragon, boop, boop, your stuff dies. Uh, round three, I play in against a Rex deck, I think, like a Dino Red. Um, and I go, boop, boop, big dragon, <laughs> your thing's dead. Uh, round four. Okay, this I haven't talked about. This I haven't talked about. So in Battle Spirit Saga, every unit has haste, kind of like Legends of Runeterra. If you play a unit, you can attack with it. But the problem with it is that you only have five life. And if you get hit at all, you lose a life, right? It doesn't matter if you hit with Seagroom Nova Mega Dragon Man, Seagroom Nova, for 12,000. Or if you get hit with a little 1,000 Dinker, you lose one life and you only have five. However, there is a card which I'm going to try to pull up so you guys can see this. Called Absolute Ice Shield. This is Absolute Ice Shield. Absolute Ice... You can't see it. Oops. This is Absolute Ice Shield. Absolute Ice Shield says, if you put it in your trap card zone, when you lose life, you could flip it up. And it basically says, if you would lose life, instead don't. And then you can pay to activate its flash effect. And its flash effect says, when this battle ends, end the attack step. And this game goes attack step and turn, right? So if you cast, if your opponent attacks, you can take the damage, activate absolute eye shield from your light. Like you can say, I take one damage, except for I don't. Also your turn's over. You cannot respond to this. Your turn is just over. <laughs> it's done. There's nothing else you can do. It's now my turn. Thank you for playing, right? This is a card that exists. This card, you have to play four of in every single deck in the game because it's so busted, right? And so on round four, I'm playing the red mirror and I just don't draw one. <laughs> I don't draw an absolute ice shield. I don't draw super mega Nova dragon man, right? And so I just die. <laughs> like my opponent just goes like three dudes and I'm like looking at my life and I'm at two and I'm like, yup. And he just goes, they all have haste, basically, right? Just attack, attack, attack. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> and I just explode on, like, turn two. And I just die. Um, the next game, same thing. Don't draw Ice Shield. Uh, don't draw Nova. Just explode. I'm like, dope. <laughs> this is this is wonderful. Can you offend in other ways? Yeah, you can block with guys that aren't tapped because you have to attack to attack with, to attack with guys. But still, since everything has haste, if, if, and there's, like, Everything has haste, and like the best draw card in the game is called Star Bless Draw, and it is also in Trap Zone. And you can flip it up to draw two cards, and you can pay mana to draw two cards. So you can like sometimes just draw four cards, which means that if you just have a bunch of like cheap dudes with discounts, because everything has affinity in this game, you can just go like, dude, 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 dude. <laughs> Do you have Ice Shield? Because otherwise, you fucking die. <laughs> like, you're so dead. Um, so that happened. I'm three and one, right? Now, keep in mind, there's like 420 people playing this game. Um, first place is worth $25,000. $25,000. It pays all the way down to 128th place, which is $500. $750 for um, 64th place. And then they top cut at top 32, which is worth 1000 and up because there's a day two at 32. We're going for nine rounds. That's what they said. Nine rounds. Uh, I'm three and one. Round five, I play against a white deck. I don't get there. My opponent just goes like, insane white card, insane white card. And I go, oh, well, it's I can't be there. Right. Uh, rough luck. Thank you for the 20 months. Uh, so now we're three and two. Unfortunate. We just didn't draw the things. We didn't get there. And that sucks. So we're three and two. Still live for everything. Um, they hate when they play insane white card. Okay, so the insane white card is an elephant and the elephant costs like eight mana, right? It's really expensive, except it has discount four because everything in this game has affinity. Um, and the landmark that they played on turn one says, if you would play an elephant, instead, this card gives it discount, like three discounts. So it costs five. So my opponent on turn two just played elephant, which is like fucking nuts. And if you, it has like 7,000 power. And if you kill it, your opponent gets to ramp three and draw three. So just play elephant and don't attack with it. Right. And then you have to attack into it, which is fine. You could go under it, except my draw didn't really work out, especially on like turn two. Um, and then also if it has four cores on it, 
if you put four mana into the elephant every single turn, it just like completely refreshes all your mana at the end of your turn and your dudes. So you just go like four cores on elephant, attack, attack, attack. Okay, your turn, untap my guys. Like you have to attack through them now. Um, so yeah, elephant was insane. And my opponent just went like turn two elephant, turn three elephant, turn five elephant. And I was like, well, shit, <laughs> like I can't beat that. So I lost three and two. Uh, I was pr feeling pretty, pretty bad. Uh, at this point, it's like seven o'clock <laughs> or something. It's like six, seven o'clock. It's really late, which is so frustrating. And remember, we started at 930. We started at 930. It's round five of nine. It's like seven o'clock. We cannot bring an outside food or drink. Like I'm miserable, miserable. The problem is like the game is not bad. It's not a bad game. Uh, there's a lot of strategy in the game, like quite a lot. Um, and I know this because I practiced it a bunch. And also because when I'm looking at, when I'm at the top tables, I was at like table four, right? And I like look to my left and everyone on my left is a flesh and blood player. <laughs> and I look to my right <laughs> and all six people on my right, flesh and blood players. <laughs> it was so funny. You had like the tournament breakdown was something like, um, <clears throat> you had like probably 50 flesh and blood and magic, the gathering players that showed up to spike the tournament. You had like 50 Bandai people that showed up to spike the tournament and maybe five of them had a chance. Right. Um, and then the, uh, another a hundred Thought they had a really good chance. Yeah, to spike means to like hit first, right? To like to like get a really good run. Um, you're like a hundred people who thought they had a really good chance, and then the other two hundred plus people um, were there to get a starter deck and a box and just play the tournament because they thought it would be really fun, right? And what ended up happening is like a couple of the Bandai people crushed because apparently I've been told, um, and I have been told in the past that there's a couple people who are just aces at Bandai games. And literally nothing else. <laughs> there are kind of a couple people that are like so insane at like a couple of Bandai games and don't play. They they are not good at anything else, which is which makes sense, honestly, because like Bandai games are very specific. It, it, like all Bandai games have like a very specific feel to them. Um, and it's it's hard if you're not used to it. So someone who's like already played Bandai games like Dragon Ball Z uh, One Piece, the other Battle Spirit Saga games, right? That like they're able to carry it over. And so I was told going into the tournament by a couple of people who play Bandai games, like the Dragon Ball game, um, they're like, hey, there's going to be a couple of these people here. You will not be able to beat them, <laughs> right? And I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> but uh, they may have been right that these people were just like, they're just better than me at these games. Um, so it feels like I just threw shade on every game that's not Flesh and Blood. I did. <laughs> Step up other games. Like, I, I absolutely 100% think that if you took competitive players from every single game um, and, you, and you made them play all other card games, the absolute best, like the best performing players by a large margin would be the Flesh and Blood players. I 100% believe that. I think it would be something like this. I think it would be Flesh and Blood, Magic the Gathering, Legend of the Runeterra, other stuff. That's what I think. Anyway, okay, so bunch of flesh and blood players at the top table. It was really funny because a bunch of us are just like, oh hey. <laughs> oh hey. <laughs> you know what? It's like I didn't I didn't think you were gonna be here. <laughs> um, but I'm three and two, which is miserable because I think my deck is way too good to be three and two. I think I practice too much to be three and two. So we're continuing. I'm so upsetty spaghetti right now, dude. I literally was texting my friends. I am upsetty spaghetti right now. Like, that's how upset I was. Because the tournament was taking so long. If I wanted to get water, if I had to, if I wanted to fill up my water bottle, either I had to pay $5 for a water bottle at the stupid chicken strip stand, or I had to walk out of security, walk downstairs, down the hall to the only water fountain to fill up my water bottle, and then walk back up, open up my bag so they could rifle through it for security, stand there and get wanded again, over and over and over again. And I like to drink a lot of water, especially on tournament days. I drink like a gallon to two gallons every single day. Um, so every single round, I would want to go fill up my water bottle, which meant I had to leave and then come back through security every single round. And it was so frustrating. It was just, it was such a pain. And we've been there for almost 12 hours at this point. 
already. <laughs> We've played five rounds, 12 hours. Like it was, oh my God, <laughs> it was brutal, brutal. Anyway, round six, I just lost to a white deck that just had the business. And I go, if I play against another white deck, I'm literally going to jump off a bridge. <laughs> There's like a real we're on like floor two and it's way higher up than floor one And I was like if I get paired up against a white deck I'm going to walk out the door and I'm just going to walk off that ledge <laughs> So I said is this game fun? It's actually kind of fun. Yeah <laughs> I know the story makes it sound like it's not but it's, it's kind of a fun game um, So I sit down. I'm like what's up opponent? My name's Caleb. I'm here to play super big dick Nova man and they're like yo I'm playing white. <laughs> and I was like, you're kidding me. <laughs> so we start playing the game. We start playing the game and I'm like, okay, this game's actually going all right. I might win game one. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, is white comparable to Highlander fatigue deck and flesh and blood? I don't know what a Highlander deck is, but kind of. Um, it's like Olden, Olden fatigue. And so... I'm like, oh my god, this sucks. But we like, we might get there this game one. My hand's kind of coming along. They didn't draw Elephant, because White doesn't actually draw that many cards. And I was like, all right, bet. Uh, and then, and like the voice of an angel, the tournament head judge says, please stop playing. There's going to be a repair. So I'm like, thank you. God, why is like Katarina Gwen? No, why is like a deck that doesn't do anything, but also you can't attack them? Yep, yep, we're like two minutes into the game. There's going to be a repair. Oh my God, salvation. I'm saved, <laughs> right? So, so I'm like, thank God. And then we sit there and we wait two to three minutes for them to get the repair done. They repost pairings and like, go ahead. Yeah, repair. So I'm paired against my opponent. Sometimes there's a mistake and they have to do a repair, which means you're going to get paired against other people. Um, so I'm sitting there and they say, okay, go ahead and refresh. And I refresh and it's the same fucking guy. No. No. <laughs> so we start playing. We start playing. Also... My opponent, shout out to my opponent. I think his name was Colt. Colt was very funny. <laughs> um, I was in a better mood just by playing with him. But anyway, we're playing against White again. And my opponent, Colt, just doesn't draw Elephant. Which is just like, oh, ah, right? And like, I just get out Nova, Super Seagworm, Nova, Dragon, King, Nova. I just play him and I'm just blowing stuff up. We're just getting there. Big thing that Nova can't kill doesn't matter. I'll give somebody challenger basically. Bam. Blow through it. And we beat White. One to zero. One to zero. Second game. All right. Here we go. Opponent. Great start. Me. Better start. We keep it going. We keep it going. We put our opponent low. They start to brick up the board a little bit. Bam. Off the top. Derm Dynat. Ah. Unblockable. We get in there win the game 2-0 white oh all right four and two four and two we have a few more rounds because that's round six we have three more rounds and i need to make top 32 easy i only need to win the next two if i win the next two i'm gonna make top 32 right so we go and we play another one i sit down and oh my god i know this guy this guy plays Flesh and Blood. I believe his name is Wesley Dong. I think that's his name. I might be saying it wrong. I know it's Fendall on Twitter. I believe his name is Wesley Dong. Um, and I know, because I saw him in the feature match, that he's playing white. <laughs> so I sit down and I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> Come on. Um, but I'm going to skip through this one. Everything came up aces, bro. <laughs> we just got there. 2-0 white. Bam, bam, bam. Um, and we get there. 
We beat White again. Five and two. Fortieth place. We're right. We're knocking at the door of top thirty-two. Now, I want to. I want to like take a minute to say that my deck was very, very good. But if I had an extra twelve hours to play with the cards in person, I think I would have had a deck that beat everything in the field. Like I think I would have had Nova tuned to where it would beat everything, including White. I think I had it, um, but I didn't have quite enough time and so like at this point i was feeling it i was like oh if i could make these 10 cards swap out or whatever or six cards then like i think i would be crushing um and it was already kind of working out right i was still like beating white sometimes uh but i'm going okay like i'm start. i'm feeling pretty good here i'm feeling pretty good we just need to win like basically one more round uh and then we'll be in top 32 and this pair is taking a while that's kind of weird. We're only seven rounds in. The round's over. Everyone's done. And the judges are just kind of sitting at a table. What's going on? It's like midnight, basically. Okay, I don't think it's that. It's like 11. And I ask people, I'm like, hey. What's going on? And they tell me. Oh. Well, all the other undefeateds drew. So now there's just one undefeated. And I'm like, okay. So what? That doesn't mean anything. Right? And they go, oh, no. The way Bandai runs tournaments is they run it either the amount of rounds they told you or when there's one undefeated, they stop the tournament. <laughs> so they stopped the tournament two rounds early. And I need one. One more match to top 32. Because I'm 40th place. And I'm fuming. Fuming. I could not believe this was happening. Oh my god. Apparently this is a thing. And other Bandai games don't have draws. So this isn't really an issue. But basically what happened is there was five undefeated players. Right? And now normally, after round eight, let's, you know, be generous and say there's... There, let's just say there's two undefeated players, right? Because one player gets a pair down and they lose. There's two other undefeated players. And then they have to play each other in round nine. And then there will be one undefeated player. But! But! Five undefeated players after round seven. One of them has the pair down. This guy. These guys are paired up against each other. So what they do is they say, we're going to intentionally draw. We're going to draw with each other on purpose. That way, if this guy with the pair down wins, the tournament ends on the spot. And he did. And it was over. And I took 40th. And I was so upset. <laughs> So upset. Oh my god. I could not believe it. Also, Drew QC, thank you so much for the 12 months, man. In the one year. I know. I saw it. I didn't I just didn't want to uh, I didn't want to interrupt my rant. Thank you very much. And Ali Sir Navai, thank you for the two months as well. Um, so yeah, that's what happened. I took 40th, which was good for $750, it's but that's not what I wanted. I wanted to win the whole goddamn tournament. Oh my god. How much did you it's win? $25,000. I was so upset, man. I was in, oh, the group I was with, you know, they cashed. And so Jason and Andy and all them, they're like, oh yeah, we only get our $500. And I'm just like, would you say they intentionally drew? I don't know if it was intentionally, but I think it was intentional. You know what I mean? Um, so that was my Vegas trip. Um, did they play the top 32? They did play the top 32 the next day. Yeah, but it just like forced Swiss to end. Um, White Control ended up winning over Rex Dino in the final. Um, and that was a tournament. And I'm going to be honest, like the actual games were fun. Except for the, the non-games where I just didn't draw Ice Shield. Um, it, it was fun. The, game, the games were good. The tournament was rough. <laughs> rough also like before the tournament the day before we went and played some blackjack i immediately lost 300 dollars <laughs> within like 25 minutes i'm losing that we have reservations for dinner sorry we can't get there in time it's gonna close uh i need to do this for my room sorry you don't have your room key 
Jason tries to buy alcohol at the liquor store in the hotel. Sorry, you don't have your ID, even though you're almost 40. You can't have it. Like, literally everything that could go wrong is just going wrong. Everything. Everything that could go wrong up until this tournament is going wrong. And then I play the tournament, and they cut it early, and I'm like, I hate this. <laughs> I'm like, this sucks so bad. Everything on this trip has gone wrong. Blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Uh, and so on Sunday, we're like, let's just play poker. Let's just go sit down at some soft poker table, at some like one three, and let's just play poker. And I was like, okay. So I sit down and we play poker and I win $700. And I was like, all right, I feel better. <laughs> and that was my Vegas trip. 